Hi and hello everyone. What we have been seeing in the last week was the semi-Markovian queues and especially the MG1 queuing system or queuing model is what we have seen. What we have done is that uh, first we obtained the PK mean value formula directly without uh, getting into the business of obtaining the stationary distribution or equilibrium distribution or steady state distribution. We directly obtained the mean value formula. Then we also obtained the system size distribution by looking at the number in the system at the departure epochs and then we showed that the departure point system size probabilities is exactly same as the arbitrary point system size probabilities. And hence uh, like that whatever distribution that we have obtained of course, this is in terms of transforms only we gave because that involves the specification of service time distribution. Okay. Only when you give the service time distribution in explicitly, then you can uh, specify the distribution of the number in the system. You can obtain it from its transform. Okay. Till that time, we can give only the formula uh, as to how one can do and we have also set how one can do and we have taken the simplest case of the service time being exponential, then we showed that the transform or the generating function or the PGF of the system size distribution is exactly same as the one that we have obtained for the case of an MM1Q, that is what we showed it. Okay. And then the condition for existence of that remain the same rho less than 1, but it can also be proved using the result that we gave in the very beginning of the course when we talked about Markov chains, how uh, one can view or one can see or one can prove the chain is positive recurrent. Okay. So, we gave on sufficient condition and using the sufficient condition one can show that rho less than 1 is the necessary and sufficient condition for the existence of uh, steady state. So, that if you are interested in looking at how exactly that thing falls, it is not a very difficult one but due to lack of time like you know we are not going into the detail, but it can be shown. So, that we are assuming away. Okay. So, now in along similar lines as we have done for at MM1Q, we would also want to look at the waiting times with respect to this MG1Qs. Okay. We already know there is a Little's law relationship that holds at the uh, level of first moment. right? L which is the first moment of the number in the system, W which is the first moment of the system waiting time or the sojourn time and these two are related through Little's law as L equal to lambda times W, right? that is what we have seen. Now, the natural question then would enquire is that is there any relationship that you can establish between the higher order moments, you know, it may not be just the ordinary moments or the raw moments, it could be central moment, factorial moment, whatever it is. Whether some moment, because you know that if you get into one moment, you can get the other moments as well, okay. So, it is one and the same. So, what is the relationship that you can establish, or if there is, is there any relationship between? the higher order moments of these two quantities, meaning the, on the one side you have the system sizes and the other side you have the waiting times. Or more generally, can we establish a relationship between these two distributions? It may be difficult to you know specify exactly what would be the relationship, but at least you know you can establish what is the relationship between them. Okay. It is not that you know, precise, but it will be in terms of as long as you know you, you do not specify the service time distribution completely, it can only be in a formula form. right? Once you specify that, then it will become the specific relationship between the distributions or if not in distribution level, maybe equivalently in terms of transforms. right? And in fact, it will show turn out that uh, uh, what the relationship that you are going to get here in our case of MG1 
is basically the relationship in terms of transforms because as we know if you know the transform then you also equivalently you know the distribution right so that's what the question is that is there a you know relationship between the moments and is there a relationship between the distribution that we can establish so that you know everything you know in a complete package kind of thing like you can get now if you know one right that's what we are going to do look at that uh, to start with note that you know the stationary distribution for the mg1 system can be written in terms of the waiting time cdf right we know that uh, we are capital T is the random variable that we denote usually the system time and F capital T of T is the CDF of that. Okay. So, we can write the you know the stationary distribution we already shown that P n equal to pi n pi n is the departure point probabilities P n is arbitrary time point probabilities. So, this P n will be this is equal to pi n is basically this quantity what is the how does you know we are writing this imagine this is so because the system size under first come first serve will equal n at an arbitrary departure point if there have been n arrivals during the departure system wait you you think of a tagged customer right your customer at a, who arrives to the system at that point of time since since right the number of uh, the how long he will wait is depends on how many customers are ahead of him in the in, his, in the queue right so his system waiting time starts at the moment when he arrives to the system then he waits some time in the queue possibly or no wait as well but he'll go into the service right at some point of time either immediately or after delay in the queue he will go to the service then there is a service duration so, from starting from his arrival till the service completion is what is his system waiting time. Now, what is the number of customers who will be left behind by this particular uh, customer is the ones who arrived during his waiting time in the system because only that many number of customers he will leave behind right and that is what precisely this right he will leave behind n right if there were n customer arrivals during his system waiting time suppose if i fix the system waiting time to be small t then in that interval of length small t the number of arrivals of this poisson process arrival because remember this is m poisson process arrival so is basically distributed as a poisson distribution with parameter lambda t and hence you have e to the power minus lambda t lambda t to the power n by n factorial is what is the num n arrivals would have been there during his system waiting time right now like you you know enumerate over all possible values of t that is what you know you will get this expression right that is for pi n which is the probability that he leaves behind n and that will be same as the arbitrary time point of uh, the system being in state n right so this is what you can observe easily that the stationary distribution in terms of the waiting time cdf you can write it in this form okay now what we can do we can multiply this equation by z to the power n and sum over n this uh, expression then you will get p of z which is the probability generating function of uh, the number in the system which is equal to this. So, which is basically summation of this and multiply by z to the power n then we are interchanging the integral and sum. So, you will get to this expression but then this is again e to the power lambda t z you club with this then you will get this expression. But now what is this expression is all about right this expression is also you know now this is nothing but the laplace tilde transform of this f t of t right so let us call that as f t star star is we are using it for laplace tilde transform so but with now the the 
variable here is lambda times 1 minus z. So, what we are obtaining is this one. So, now you see P of z is equal to the Laplace TLJ transform of the system waiting time t with the variable as lambda times 1 minus z. So, these two are equal right. This is a first relationship ok. This is the first relationship that you need to remember that how the system waiting time and the number in the system. Now, you see number this is transform. So, that means the distribution is what you are talking about. The distribution of number in the system, here the distribution of the system waiting time. This is the PGF you are talking about. Then what you do? You take the Laplace TJ transform of the system waiting time which is capital T and once you find that then replace that variable by lambda times 1 minus z then that would be equal to P of z. So, this establishes then the relationship between the number in the system, the distribution of the number in the system and the distribution of the sojourn time right. So, this is the first relationship we are going to use this relationship finally to put together uh, everything together in a way right. So, this is what you know you are observing first ok. Now, by repeated differentiation of uh, this relationship right this P of z equal to f t star of this. Now, because we said that this is number in the system this is system waiting time what is Little's law? It is also it, this also exactly the, the two side of the equation one side is the number of the system the other side is the waiting time system waiting time, but now you are looking at the first moment in which way they are related right. So, again so that means that you know if I differentiate this and then if I substitute you know z equal to 1 then what you will get is the moments we know PGF. So, you take this equation you differentiate that now that in this side you know z is here. So, you use a chain rule here to get to this expression right. So, d the kth uh, differentiation value right the kth order differential coefficient right is what this quantity is on the left side and the right side by the use of chain rule this quantity multiplied by this is what you will get here. Now, this quantity when you evaluate u is equal to lambda times uh, 1 minus e z right what you will get again from the properties of the, uh, the Laplace steel j transform or Laplace transform and our the, the star 1 and the same. So, this will be exactly equal to expectation of this right. So, this is what you know you will be arriving getting it here when you do that when you evaluate at this point ok. Now, we know P G F when you differentiate when you put uh, the variable e tending to 1 you are going to get the factorial moments right. So, the left side you will get the factorial moment suppose if you denote L in the suffix with the bracket k to denote the kth factorial moment of the system size and on the right side W with simply suffix k to denote the regular or the raw moment kth order raw moment of the system waiting time. Then when you evaluate this at z equal to 1 right z equal to 1 that means that u is equal to 0. So, what you will get here is that this is expectation of t to the power k and this is anyway 1 and lambda to the power k is what on the right side you will get and the left side is nothing but the factorial moment right. So, this is the what we are relating now we are relating the moments of these two distributions right in general the kth order. But what we are getting now is that this is the factorial moment and this is the simple moment or the regular moment of order k. This is a factorial moment of order k and so this now when k is equal to 1 you know this is simply expectation of n and this is expectation of t and this is simply lambda. So, we are getting back the Little's law. Now, if it is 2 right if it is 2 then this L k means what it is for example, if I if I if I write it for say k is equal to 2 k's. So, what you will get 
at the left side you will have expectation of n into n minus 1 and on the right side what you will get it is lambda square this is expectation of t square right. So, this is what you will get for case equal to 2 case right it is an example we are writing it out but this is what basically this relationship tells you right. So, this is the factorial moment on the left side this is the ordinary moment on the right side. So, the moments when we talked about the question whether what is the relationship between the higher order moments if there is one yes there is relationship and the relationship is given by this expression. So, this is then you can view it this is as if a generalization of Little's law right for higher order moments. So, now like suppose if I know this then I can come to know what is expectation of n square or variance of n whatever right. But essentially this is the relationship that you, you are giving it here. So, in k is equal to 2 case you will get this k is equal to 1 you will get this uh, Little's law and so on. So, this is the generalization in terms of the moments or how the moments are related between the waiting time distribution and the number in the system in an mg1 system right. So, this is what is the relationship that we are establishing right. So, this is the first question that we asked and the answer to that is is what is given by this generalization of Little's law. So, that is why we again put it in a boxed quantity. So, the first box quantity was this relationship, the second one was this moment relationship right. Now, we will go further we look at the relationship between the distributions what kind of uh, the relationship that one can establish. Remember we are still have the distribution of the service time given in terms of the distribution in generic form not a specific distribution that we have in mind ok. So, things have to boil down to that level that is what is the relationship that we want to establish ok. Now, before we move let us look at what happens in an MM1 queue ok. In MM1 queue we looked at the system waiting time distribution can be returned in terms of the service time distribution as this way. What is that? So, where this one B in the superscript simply without uh, star, but with bracket n plus 1 if you write. Remember in the renewal theory uh, lectures we noted a star here, but then here would introducing a star would be confusing because there is one Laplace TJ transform also that we are putting it as a star. So, we will go without that star, so, but we write it within bracket in the superscript to mean that this is a n plus 1 fold convolution of such a distribution. So, that is what this quantity is the n plus 1 fold convolution of the CDF of the service time distribution. We know what is the duration of system waiting time in an MM1 queue right. The probability that he finds n on his arrival and all those customers have to be served ahead of him plus his own service time. So, there will be n plus 1 service time has to complete if he finds arrival as n in front of him. Now, that is what the finding n is what this 1 minus rho times rho to the power n is what is that probability and this is the sum of n plus 1 service times right with all possible values of n from 0 to infinity would give you the distribution of the system waiting time. So, this is what is the relationship and here the memoryless property really helped us to get this uh, very nice result because this took care of the situation where the arrivals uh, happen in the middle of an ongoing service and then what is the remaining service time of the current customer who is currently getting the service because of this memoryless property we could immediately write it down immediately in this way without uh, regard to when that particular customer arrives ok. But now in the MG1 case that is not the case here because we do not have the memoryless property in general unless the distribution itself is exponential. But since we are talking about general we always have to keep in mind the general fact. So, we do not have the memoryless property. So, we need an alternative way of 
deriving such a comparable result for an MG1Q. Uh, that is what we will aim to do. So, to towards that end, what we will do? We will first derive a simple relationship between the Laplace TLG transform of service time and waiting time. Right. Both of them are continuous in a way. Service time and waiting time, what is the relationship? Which is basically the service time is B star of S and F T star of S is what is the system waiting time. Waiting time here means system waiting time we are looking at. We already know the relationship between the number in the system and the system waiting time, this relationship that we have already obtained. And from our earlier results, that the number in the system result that we have obtained, we obtained this pi of z equal to this quantity which is in terms of this k of z, but we also showed that this pi of z would be same as p of z because departure point system size probabilities is the same as arbitrary time point system size probabilities that is what you know gives you this. So, this is also we have derived earlier, but the p g of k of z which is basically k i this is number of arrivals during the service time. Right. So, there are I arrivals during a service time is what is that and if uh, this is this quantity if, if I want a generating function of that then again I will multiply this k i to the power uh, and multiply by z to the power i and sum over all i and that is what you know we are getting it here and then this k i itself can be given in terms of as e to the power minus lambda t lambda t to the power i divided by i factorial times d b b of t that is what you know we have done right. Now, to that we are multiplying by z to the power n. So, we will get this expression. The summation was there. We have just interchanged again summation and integral and we are writing it in this form. This is again e to the power series. So, once you plug it e to the power lambda t z for this you will get this expression, but what is this? This is nothing but the Laplace TLJ transform of B with the variable lambda times 1 minus z. So, k of z is actually this right. So, this is what we are observing now. So, this is another fact that we are observing right. So, we already observed this fact and we know about this right. Now, k of z is basically equal to this quantity here. So, now we will put all of these together to see what happens right. So, we take this f t star of lambda times 1 minus z which is nothing but p of z which is equal to this right. So, this is equal to p of z which is equal to pi of z which is equal to this quantity where k of z is again in terms of this. So, we are writing this in terms of this which will give you the relationship between the service time distribution and the system waiting time right that is what we are we are doing it here. F t star related to p which is same as pi, pi is related to k and k is related to b star that is what we are finally writing it here right. So, exactly this expression. So, you are starting from here which is equal to p of z which is equal to pi of z which is equal to this. Now, k of z because of this you substitute it here. So, F t star will be equal to this in terms of b star is what then you are getting it here right or now you can make this change of variable like lambda times 1 minus z suppose if you call that as a s then you can just see that this quantity is b star of s and this is b star of this, but then you know you have this 1 minus rule will remain, but 1 minus z you have to do some minor adjustment. So, you will get s by this quantity and so on. So, finally, it is just that you know you will arrive at this expression which relates the system time to the service time ultimately that is what we wanted to if you want to get the distribution of the system waiting time the service time distribution should be known. Now, once service time distribution is known at is in terms of which transforms then I can substitute here I will get this distribution and if I invert that right if I take the inver uh, inversion of that I will going to get the waiting time distribution like in the case of. So, this is what you know you are seeing it here right for the system waiting time or the sojourn time or waiting time in the system. Now, we know this is consisting of T q plus s right. 
T is equal to T q plus s and if I take the transform for this random variable, uh, the convolution property gives me that in terms of transform that uh, this transform of T would be the transform the product of the transform of these two quantities. right? Now, but F T s you already see one B star of S n explicitly. So, the remaining quantity would then be equal to F T q star of S which is basically the Laplace T j transform of the line waiting or you know the waiting time in the q is what is given by this expression. So, at least now in terms of the transforms of the service time distribution you have given now the system waiting time right and the or sojourn time or waiting time in the system as well as waiting time in the q. Now, once I know what is this b star of s then I get these expressions. Now, you know suppose if I have an exponential distribution then I know what is this b star of s just substitute it you will get the distribution you should get that same distribution that you have derived earlier right. But now you can go much beyond exponential to see that you know what are the distributions for which you have right. So, given so given this now I can obtain the distribution but now the distribution we are writing it in terms of the transforms that is what you know you are seeing here. Now, this one say suppose now if you, if you want little bit more explicitly because we want to see a similar result to what happens in the MM1 case. So, if I want to write this you can expand this as a geometric series right 1 minus rho this quantity, but lambda by s I can write it as uh, you know mu times rho lambda I can write as mu times rho. So, that rho I will take it out that mu by s this one. So, this I can write in this form. Why? Because this quantity which is there inside this bracket this mu by s times 1 minus b star of s is actually the Laplace TLJ transform of the residual service time distribution which we call it as R of t as mu times integral 0 to t 1 minus b of x dx. Recall our renewal theory results, but there rate we assumed it as 1 by mu, but here the rate is mu. So, this term is appearing here as mu, but in renewal theory we call 1 by mu as the rate. So, that was 1 by mu here exactly that same expression that we are getting it here. Okay. So, this R of t is the CDF of the remaining service time of the customer being served at the time of an arbitrary arrival given that of course, the arrival occurs when the server is busy. So, now this is what you are observing right. Now, it is Laplace steel J transform suppose if I call this as R star of n. So, this quantity is what then you can write it in terms of this distribution. So, this is the residual service time distribution is what you have it in terms of this. Now, once I have this form now if I can take the you know inversion of this process uh, or the Laplace CJ transform then because I know that if I have the power then in the inversion I will get the convolution right. So, I will end up with this expression which is a result which is similar in uh, look to the case of an MM1, but it is not involving the same thing, but it is something similar one can give an argument, one can give an interpretation to such kind of expression what it means and so on. So, that is uh, what then one can do. So, basically like if you reorder the time with the remaining service time as the fundamental unit which is what this uh, RT, then the steady states find N. Uh, such time units of potential service in front of it with this probability 1 minus over rho to the power n which is in the if you interpret in that form then it is similar to what one would give it for uh, in the case of an mm1 model so that's what we are seeing it here okay but mainly like this is an additional input but mainly this part is what is relevant that if you are looking for the distribution of service uh, system waiting time or q waiting time right then they are related to the service time distribution in this form now once i know what is b star of s then i can substitute here and then you can do so as an exercise take exponential
and derive result you know similar to or which will result in mm1 result not similar in a way which is exactly will be equal to the mm1 result okay so you can do that exercise to get the idea okay that's what waiting time distributions that you know we have been talking about now similarly one can also come conduct a busy period analysis but here the busy period analysis is a bit uh, in terms of the time domain if you are looking at it it is a bit more difficult than what one would do for mm1 and mm1 itself we know that you know how difficult it was but it is not that much difficult to find the laplace cj transform of the busy period and from which at least the moments can be obtained okay so one can also get that easily okay how do we do uh, let us proceed because busy period is also important concept in q in general we have done it only for mm1 but for mg1 we can give it so that you know you can at least get the moments of this busy period which will be very relevant in many practical situations okay so this g of x let us denote by g of x this cdf of the busy period you know already know what is a busy period means okay there is an empty system to which a first customer comes and from that point till when the server becomes idle for the first time so this is what is called the busy period right so now we are looking at the duration or the time duration and its distribution is what we are looking at it here okay now let us take an mg1 with the service cdf b of t let g of x denote the cdf of the busy period which we call it some x some random variable now what we can do we can condition on this x uh, on the length of the first service time inaugurating the busy period right so we can condition on this particular x right which is the length of the first duration first uh, you know service time because it's a empty system to which the first customer comes now during his service time how many would have you know, come and each one right will generate its own busy period right because during its suppose there are five customer has come okay assume now the first customer when during his service time also some number would have come right so that will be probabilistically equal to the very first customer that you consider uh, you know during his service time this five customer has come now out of this five the first one will be the next to go to for service now during his service time again some more would have come right that is that's equivalent to original customer that you can call it okay so this each arrival during the first service time of the busy period generates its own busy period so you have to keep that in mind to, to write this one now if you want g of x which means the total busy period is less than x right less than or equal to x so this if i want capital x then g of x is probability of capital x less than or equal to small x that's what this g of x right now this g of x out of this x t time units is the service time of the first uh, uh, customer so suppose if i fix that as t then the probability that the busy period generated by all arrivals during this t units should be less than or equal to x minus t so that together the total busy period ends uh, by time x right that's what should happen now you just have to plug in those quantities now right this dbt will remain now what is the num busy period number of arrivals so this t now can vary between anything between 0 and x so this integral comes here that's the first part second now during a service time of t how many arrivals would have happened it is according to a poisson process right so that is suppose if it is n then this is the probability that there are n arrivals and its each of them generate its own busy period which is similar in probability uh, probabilistic sense to g so this will be then the n fold convolution with the uh, value as x minus t is what this thing will give you 
Now, this since this n can vary between anything between 0 and infinity, you get this quantity, right. So, this is what is the expression where this g n is the n fold convolution of g and g star of s suppose if you call as the LST of uh, g of x and as usual for b t it is b star of s. So, you take the Laplace transform on both sides Laplace CG transform on both sides then you will get uh, this is what you will get here right. So, e to the, e to the power minus s x times 0 to infinity d x is what then you will get when you want to write, take the both side the Laplace CJ transform. Now, you can change the order of integration from you know t and x to x and t. So, 0 to t then this will become now t to infinity of this quantity right of this quantity. Now, what one can do again here you can take this inside to get to this form right to get to this form you take this other quantities out except this x quantities inside this. So, you will get this one. Now, make a change of variable x minus t to some y then you will get this expression right. We are not doing much in the other ones only this uh, portion then will bring down to this portion with that change right. Now, again by the convolution property what this would mean is right this is basically the convolution property of that would give you as this quantity right. Now, again this one you can club with this lambda t to the power n to get this quantity and so on. So, finally, we will get this g star of s as b star of s plus lambda minus lambda g star of s is the relationship that we are getting that is all. It is not in explicit form like the other cases like in the system waiting time what we did is t or t q we, ex we expressed in terms of b completely, but here b you need, but within b again there is a g star it is a interlinked relationship is what then you are seeing it ok. Of course, you need the form of this b star form of this b star right. So, once you have this Laplace CG transform of the service time distribution then the argument you have to substitute this quantity which will again involve this g star of s which is what you are trying to compute. So, it is something like an integral equation kind of thing essentially that is what it is. So, that is uh, what you know you are, you are getting it here ok. So, this is the relationship that is the main part that how the distribution of the BC period is related to the distribution of the service time. because everything else is specified. Now, service time is what is unspecified which you will change because this is the mg1 model right. So, that relationship is this ok. Now, depending upon what is this p star then one can do you know some solution of this whether we can obtain and so on one can think ok. Maybe again exponential case you can think deterministic case you can think and so on some simpler cases you can always work it out to see like how one can obtain the BCP in that case. But Nevertheless, from this equation itself one can obtain the mean values say for example, if you are looking at the mean length of the BC period how one can obtain because this is defined to be expectation of x which is because this is Laplace TJ transform it is negative of the derivative evaluated at s is equal to 0 is what is going to give you this which is essentially we denote it by g star dash at 0. Where what is g star dash at s is basically this and then it is 1 uh, minus lambda g star exactly same 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 expression will come here because you know b star dash of this argument and then the derivative of this will give you 1 minus lambda time g star dash of s is what then you will going to get ok. So, this is what is this. Now, we want to obtain this quantity. Now, what is that? So, expectation of x is then actually equal to this right because this quantity or this quantity is exactly equal to this. Now, we are evaluating at 0 right. So, this is uh, 0 and this is 0 and we know what is g star of 0 which is equal to 1. So, this becomes that whole quantity is 0 that is what you are getting it here and this quantity is this but we know this is equal to expectation of x. So, 
what you are looking at is that expectation of x is equal to minus this quantity times 1 plus lambda time expectation of x or expectation of x okay this is not uh, so this is expectation of x is equal to this quantity right but you know we know this quantity again you know this is from the service time distribution it is mean right. So, the negative of that is what you will get here. So, that means this is will be equal to this which is equal to 1 by mu minus lambda which is what we obtained in the case of when we considered mm1 and we that time we said that this is also true for mg1 case okay mg1 case and here is what you are seeing it in general for uh, this particular case because this is mean is we are assuming to we are not assuming this is not does not mean that the b is exponential here right we are only looking at the mean of the service time distribution which we are denoting it by uh, in terms of mu. So, it is 1 by mu is what the mean so mu is the rate that we are talking about okay. So, this is exactly same result. So, this also this mean is in some sense is the insensitivity to the service time distribution you have as long as mean is known you will get this as the mean busy period that we have seen here right. So, this is what we said in the point of time now you can see that this is also true for mg1 and mg1 because in the generality like busy period is and since it is an important component you need to understand. So, basically the two main things are here is this relationship between the Laplace transform of the busy period CDF and the CDF of the service time distribution is related by this relationship and the mean is given by this. Now, higher order moments again one can be able to obtain using the same relationship that we are here. Okay. So, this is what we have it for MG1Q I mean with uh, you know infinite capacity and FCFS discipline right. So, we have seen Again, like in MM1 case, here also we have characterized the number in the system, the waiting times, busy period, everything we have done for MG1. Now, like when G is equal to exponential distribution, then you will get the corresponding results of MM1 very nicely. But now you can have much more generic distribution also, but now because you know of the assumption that you make, which is a general time distribution what we are seeing is that the results are all mainly in transform form okay but from which moments can be obtained now once you have the specific form of the service system distribution then you can get the transform results for the number in the system or the service time which inversion whether it is z transform inversion inversion or the laplace z transform inversion you will get the the actual distribution is what then you Okay. So, this is the broad picture and that is what we have done for MG1 model. Okay. So, let us stop here, we will continue with something more in the later class. Thank you, bye.